Okay. Hello, and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor. This is lecture 19 on CSS selectors. And you might say, CSS selectors, what are, why, why are we studying CSS selectors? Well, the reason why is that is because of this. We did the document object model in our last lecture, and some people will actually, believe it or not, they'll actually say this. They'll say that they don't like the document object model because it's, it's too confusing. And as you saw, you had the Campbell case with the document object model and all the dot things and what have you. So it's too confusing. So someone over here says, they answer that and they say, well, they might respond back, well, try using jQuery instead. And let's see what that person would look like. That person would probably have glasses on. And, and they would have like a, a nice smile answering back. And then, of course, they'd have a jacket uh, 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 with a collar. And that would be the response. Well, try using jQuery instead. And you might say, wait a minute, what's jQuery? You didn't even tell me that. You told me that this was going to be on CSS selectors. That's true. jQuery is going to be in our next lecture. But what jQuery is, is that it is a JavaScript library that makes doing uh, interactive web pages a lot easier without having to use the document object model. But in order to understand jQuery, we have to understand what are CSS selectors. So if you recall from our lecture on CSS, that stood for what did it stand for? That stood for cascading style sheets and a CSS selector determines which HTML element uh, to apply the style to. So a CSS selector, whatever that looks like, what that does, that determines which HTML element to apply the style to. And by now, we should know what an HTML element is, right? OK, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more information about the selectors. But first, I want to show you something uh, up on the monitor. So if we could go to the monitor, please, and stay on the monitor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, web page. And I'm going to right click and go to New and come to my favorite editor, which is, um, um, what is it? It's the one that makes the text document, right? Notepad. And I'll just put um, CSS stuff. And it's going to be, not going to be text, it's going to be .html. And I get a warning message, and I just type yes. And now what I'm going to do, here's my CSS stuff. I'm going to right click 
and I'm going to uh, open with Notepad. Okay, there's Notepad, so I'm going to put in start out. And let's put in the doc type, so that uh, this knows that it is uh, HTML5. Okay, so doc type like that H HTML means that uh, it's telling it's telling the browser that this is HTML5. So I'm going to start it out with the root element. So this is the opening tag for the root element, HTML. And then we're going to start out with the head. And then we're going to have a title so that the search engines can find it. And I'm going to put it my CSS example. Okay, And I'm going to close it off. So there is the title element now. And now what I'm going to do, this is where I'm going to put my CSS is right in the style element. Right now, it's an empty element, but I'll come back and put my CSS stuff there. And so this is going to close off the head element. And now I'm going to have the body. Here's the body tag to start that. And this is where I'm going to put all the stuff that you will see on your web page. This, of course, as you remember, is the web document. And so I closed off the HTML element which is a root element. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and I'm going to put some, um, some presentation uh, elements here. Because so far what I have are structural elements. Let me put a presentation element in, such as H1. And I'm going to put uh, here is an H1 element. The reason why I'm doing this is so I can show uh, the use of CSS selectors. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put uh, another, another presentation one, and I'm going to say uh, now for uh, a H2 element. Okay. So there's my, whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, there is my uh, close it off H2. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some paragraphs. And I need to put in a lot of paragraphs. And, and so that I don't bore you with a lot of my slow typing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy those paragraphs from a, another text document I have, and I'm going to paste them right here. And you see what I have now is I have essentially uh, four paragraphs. This, here's, here's a paragraph here. There's one paragraph element uh, right here. And there's another one, another one, another one. And I, let me just put delete here. I'm going to do a control S to save it. And I'm going to come here now. I saved it. And I'm going to double click and see what I get. And that's what I get. Let me, let me zoom in on this so you can see it on the, on the screen. I'll just do a control and come in here. So let's see if what you see here makes sense. OK? This is my web page. This is my web document. So uh, what I've got, this is an H1 element. Now for an H2 element, this is a paragraph. Here's another very cool paragraph. How about one more paragraph? However, we'll just use one more paragraph for now. And, uh, and basically, that's it. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to use a CSS selector. And the selector that I'm going to use is what we call an element selector. And the element selector, I'm going to select the body. And I'm going to use the, 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 the funny syntax. And I'm going to put background, B-A-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D. And the background is going to be black. And then I'm going to use the foreground, and that's just color. And I'm going to make that silver. And then I'm going to come over here and close this off. And then I'm going to come up here and save this. And I'm going to come and refresh it. And let's see what I've got here. I'm going to move this over to the side here. I'm going to bring this and move this over to here like this. Okay. And stay on, the, stay on there. And I'll just come over here and try and explain what I've got. What I've done here with the style is that I put a CSS selector. The selector says anything in the body element. Well, what's in the body element? Well, this is the body element. Here's the body opening tag. 
here's the body closing tag. So anything within this element, I want the background to be black. I said, okay, cool, there you go, man. It's all black. Okay, and I want the foreground color, you use color there, to be silver. We're within the body element, same thing again. So any text within there now is gonna be silver. So this right here is the CSS selector, and I used an element to do the selection. All right, stay on the screen here, please. I'm going to select another element here. And the other element I'm going to select is the H1 element, okay, which I already have there. And let's say that for that one, I want the color to be uh, red. Now, unfortunately, people that are colorblind may not be able to see, to see this at all. So uh, you can ask your friend if you can see that. All right, so what I'm going to do is do this and now it's red. So staying on here, I'm gonna come back here. So here I used another element selector, H1. Here's the H1 element. There's this opening tag, there's this closing tag. And it says for the H1 element, I want the color to be red. Okay, that's cool. Now, let's look at the paragraph element. For the paragraph element, let's say, here we go, P for paragraph, and let's say that we want the color there to be tan. Now you might say, wait a minute, Amson, we've got four paragraph elements here. What's gonna happen uh, with, that, with that selector if all these, uh, you know, they're all paragraph elements, aren't they? Well, let me come down here and straighten this out. Let me come down and straighten this out. Yeah, they're all paragraph elements. What do you think is going to happen now? Well, let's try it. I'm going to save this. I'm going to come here and refresh it. So what happened now is that every one of the paragraph elements, because they all are paragraph elements, became tan. So here I'm using, I'm using a CSS selector, and the CSS selector I'm using is an element selector. Okay, you say, well, that's, that's very cool, man. But supposing I wanted for the second paragraph, and only for the second paragraph, I wanted that font size to be larger, but I didn't want it to be larger on these other paragraph elements. How would I select just the second paragraph? Okay, the way we do that is we use an attribute. And the attribute that we can use, we're gonna come down here on the second paragraph element, we're gonna use the ID attribute. And let's just call it, remember they're value pairs, let's just call it P2. Okay, so we've given the second uh, paragraph an ID attribute of P2. To to use a CSS selector just for the ID of P2, what I do is I use a pound sign and then P2, just like, just like that, and now that CSS selector will select just that element. So I can put font size, <coughs> let me make it 150%. That's pretty bold, pretty large, okay. Now what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to save it and I'm going to refresh it. And now what I see is because I use the ID attribute of P2 right here, this is the selector and it says, oh, that's the only element that has that ID, so that's the one I'm going to make the font size 150%. So I see Another selector that I can use in CSS is uh, a, a, an ID selector, and that allows me to pick a particular element. Now, you might say, well, that's pretty cool, but supposing I wanted, um, I wanted to pick this paragraph, and I wanted to pick this paragraph, and I wanted these paragraphs to be in Arial. I wanted the font to be Arial. How could I do that? Well, what I could do is I could, for the first 
and, and the third paragraph, I could use them both having the same ID selectors. Like it could be P1 and then P1 again, but that's generally not done. What's done is using an attribute that's called class. It's called class, and bear with me on that. So I'm gonna open this up here, and I'm gonna put a class attribute on this paragraph, and I'm gonna call it my font. And I'm gonna put the same class attribute on the last one. Remember, attributes go inside the opening tag, and they're always value pairs. And class is the identifier. Now, what's important? What's important is that both of both of both of, of these paragraph elements have the same class. They're my font and my font. And what I need to do to show that is this: is that in the paragraph element, dot, my font, the dot means what follows is the class. What I want is I want that uh, uh, font, whoops, font family, I want that to be Arial. Coming back here. Control S to save it, and I'm going to come over here to refresh it. Now, if I look at this, the first paragraph is Arial, and the last paragraph is Arial. And let me just scroll down here so we can see that. What I've done here is that I've used a class, and I use the class attribute when I want several of the same kind of elements uh, to do a, a certain style. So this uh, right here, this, this CSS selector was in any paragraph element that has dot my font, I want the font family to be Arial. Now, supposing I wanted to use a class identifier here, and I also wanted this to be uh, Arial. Let's say this guy here. Or, or let's, let's say for for the H1 element. I wanted that to be Arial too. What I could do here is I could come here and I could put class equals, I'm going to put, put an attribute, I'm going to put my font, just like that. And if I do a control S and I do a refresh, you'll observe that nothing happens. It's not Arial. The reason why is because I said in every paragraph I want it to be Arial. Well, supposing I want it to be wherever the class is my font. What I do is I remove the element identifier and I just have a dot my font. Now, any element that has the class my font will now be Arial. I'm going to do a control S to save it, come up here and refresh it, and now this one is Arial. So, a class identifier, a, a CSS identifier that has dot my font, the dot means it's a class. And classes are used to identify several uh, HTML elements at the same time. And it saves me a lot of coding. All of these are now going to be Arial. If I just want to identify this one, I could have put an h1 dot my font and it would have done just that. Okay, so what I see here is that I have CSS selectors, I have an element selector, I have an ID selector, which uses the pound sign, and I have a class selector, which uses the dot. What I'd like to do now is go up here on the board, and I'd like to write out a table on this. Because it, it's important that when we get into our next lecture, which we'll be taping or videoing tomorrow, that we understand what the selectors are. So here's the table. Here's the selector. Here's an example. And here's the comments. 
Now, there are other selectors, but we're just going to focus on these three. There's other selectors that are used by cascading style sheets. There's the element selector, and we saw that that, that, that was like body or H1 uh, selects everything in the body element. And then the other kind we had was an ID selector, and that was like uh, P1 par for paragraph one, and this selects the element with the P1 ID attribute. And then the last one we had was dot, was the class selector, and that was like dot, my stuff, selects all elements with the class equals my stuff. Now, understanding what CSS selectors are and what they look like and looking at the three most common we're now ready to go and uh, understand how jQuery works, and that'll be our next lecture. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thank you for attending.